So yeah. we're live now and we're recording. Avoid legal snags by telling people they're being recorded. Black <laughs> Radical Mark II, you are now being recorded. <laughs> as always, fam, as always. <laughs> I was I was listening to the project. I've, I've been listening to it like on and off the past two weeks, but this morning for, you know, for reasons, I was just like really penetrating it. It's just a really dope project. I'm super excited to be pointed out because it's kind of a, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a capsule. It's a time period capsule of an artist um, and influential artist that maybe never got his due props, maybe never felt he got his, his due props and he's signing out. Right? Maybe that's what it is. No, nah, bro, you've just you hit it on the head. You know what I mean? Like the original you know me and my man, like I keep it real. There's a certain amount of bitching and whining <laughs> in the project, but I, don't say bitching and whining, I, just keep it kinda, real. I think it was kind of due though, because I don't think it's me one. I think there's a lot of UK artists who didn't really get the love that they was due to get. And you address that in um, black black pop, kind of, but in the the victory. I think the victory. You 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 address that situation. Yeah, I was trying to. It's like you said, it wasn't so much a topic per track scenario. So you've hit it on the head again. Like little parts of the you know the, the whole um, story play out in different tracks. So yeah, address that little in the victory, a little bit in like you know last will and testament. Um, you know, talking about the fact that the DJs didn't really back us, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like I said, it's, it's it's a feeling like, for real, as a sign off, you know what I mean? It was that it was like really this should have gone further, been bigger, but I'm grateful for what it was. But, but it was also testament, and I tell you why for real, it was a testament to the my generation of British hip hop because before that, on the previous album, I made a track called My Props. Mm -hmm. And then the first lines of that are like, no, I, I won't be the first, but I might be the last when they ask you so fast UK rap came to pass. And then I kind of mm -hmm. go through to name, I try to name every MC for my era. So I'm talking mm -hmm. about Merlin, Duke, Overlord X, Freshy, Dames, da, da, da. So by the time I come to retire, bearing in mind that I done said I was going to be the last one out of the game unless I got my props. I, I felt like none of my generation got their props. You get me? <laughs> yeah. I'm naming right. like Hunk Kilberry Finn. I'm naming the Brotherhood. I'm naming, you know, MCD. I'm naming um, Two Times Death. Like my generation, it got what they call the golden era, era of UK hip hop. It like it felt to me like none of the crew got their crop, props. Blade never got his props. You know what I mean? And yeah. I said I was going to be the last, but you know, as life has it, I wasn't the last. The Godfather right. of P was the last. <laughs> the man is around still. Yeah, well, that's what I said. I'm always going to give respect to the Godfather of Rodney P. He was the last. He was going nowhere. <laughs> what, what I like about this project is that you've you, you've got a lot to, to say, but it's still entertaining. Like the beats on it, like the first track, Black Pop, that samples a classic rare groove tune. I, I, I won't name the artist, whatever, but they, it samples a classic rare groove. London tune, and you just kill it, and then you got this. You've got the second one. Is that is that the Amateurville beat? You, you know that that Love Bug Starsky. Remember the Love Bug Starsky joint from back in the day, the Amateurville yeah. House on the Hill. Nah, is it, it that? wasn't that. But it kind of reminds me of it. It is though. That's what I'm trying to say. That was the kind of vibe I was going for. A hundred percent, man. Um, but yeah, no, for real, man. Like, well, you know, this is down to the last conversation we had on the podcast, man. It's like UK is in a unique position musically. So you could be hardcore hip hop, but you know about your rear groove and your two step. You know what I mean? So that's why the, the black pop had to be like a, a rear groove. And funnily enough, that was also like, you know, a lot of it was a call back, like. My very first song that ever went on vinyl was a song called "We Out of Here," which um I can name that I can name that that sampled ninety percent of me by Gwen McRae. All oh, right. So the first thing I ever committed to record was and, a rare group. That's the London classic. Like, 
yeah, you get me. Mm. So so it was like a call back to that that you know the first thing I ever put on record was on a rear groove beat because that was us in London. We was on the rear grooves. Um, you know what I mean? Not so much the break. So the last thing I did was on like I had to be on a rear groove as well. Yeah, that's what I love. This this album has brought me full circle, and I'm so proud to be reissuing it and putting it out. I feel like I'm the right person slash we're the right label to put it out because I get it. I get the references. I was there, wow. right? And um, yeah, what was I gonna say? It's just um. I was going to make a point and I can't remember the point that I, that I was going to make, but yeah, but what, what led you up to this project? Like what made you think like, you know what? I've had enough. I'm going to put out my, my last will and Testament and move on to bigger and better things. Like what put me in that mindset? Yo, that's a really good question, man. I got to be real. It's a bit of a throwback, but, to try and get in that place, I think there was a mixture of things. One of those things that was definitely in my mind, 100%, was that, and I said it like, you know, um, you think you need me now more than ever, but I've been doing this for 12 years now, so whatever you think is already recorded, go back to past chapters, research and audit, borrow if you can't afford it. So mm -hmm. I was on a thing like, I've done it. Yeah. Like, you know, people forget this and it, uh, one thing that really surprised me, or that I shouldn't have surprised me, is recently, like in the next, in the last two years, I was listening to an interview by Professor Griff of Public Enemy, talking about the breakup of Public Enemy. And what he was saying was the, the statements that he made that were controversial, he didn't think they were controversial at the time because Public Enemy always had a plan to only be in the music industry for 10 years. Uh, and so did I. Uh, so when I came out, it, that it really surprised me that it's like, you know, it was like a great minds think alike. I didn't think anybody else was on my thing. I came out on the Black Radical thing for one simple reason. I truly believe somebody needed to occupy that space and tell that truth and tell that story without any kind of, um, you know, any kind of holding back. You know, just put themselves out there, tell the truth and they'll take all the risks. Mm. But I was aware I could only do that for a certain amount of time. So I wasn't a team like, I'm living in my mom's yard, I don't have no money, I don't have no family, I've got no kids. You can't do nothing to me. What you can do is kill me. Mm. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else you can take away from me. So I can be as raw and as honest and as truthful and as confrontational as I need to be. But it was always only meant to be for a certain amount of time. Right. So I felt like I'd done it. That was the, what was the one vibe. One vibe was like, yo, you know what? I came here to deliver this message. And I feel like I've done it. After this point, it's just going to be me reiterating and repeating the same thing. And then admittedly, the flip side on, without a doubt, like I said, the bitching and whining on a musical side, because there was always a musical side to music. I kind of felt that because we was on message and we stayed on message, a lot of people, the actual quality of the music just went over their head. And, and I ain't going to lie, man, as a musician, that always hurt me. Like, I get it. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's not really your topic. Like, I remember um, I heard Joe Budden when To Pimp a Butterfly came out, and he was just went in on K Dot saying, I don't want to hear this black manifesto. I don't want to hear this shit. Mm -hmm. And that's how some people are. So what happens is you have a certain, you know, agenda with your music or, or, or a theme with your music, and it just switches people's ability off to hear if it's actually quality music. And that was the, that was the other side of it. I was like, yo, you know what? Um, I'm working hard to try and make this stuff as quality as possible. Bear in mind, we were always a guerrilla organization. You know, we started off on our own, as you know, as an independent label, sold myself into Island Records to get some money to put back into the independent label. I was signed to Island while we was running basing, you know, um, all day and trying to get the other acts released to our independent label. And then I went back in the label and I left them. So, you know, I felt like, you know, those, those are the two sides of the coin. That's really what my mind was in. One was I've done it. And the other side was, yo, man, I don't think people are really appreciating that this is, you know, of decent quality, at least as of decent quality of some of the other stuff. Because the thing about this EP is that the quality is of a, is of a high, it's of a high mark. And the production levels, my, my favourite production is um, the last track, The End. Oh, word. I love the production on that joint. 
I mean, the whole EP, because it's four tracks. Like, I like um, the second to last track. Um, that night, like, the victory? Victory. When it's just going to cool, laid back vibe. Like, and I think you, you referenced it in a conversation with somebody or maybe with me. But you were saying you were listening to a lot of like the Doors and 60s kind of psychedelia at the time. And yeah. walk, walk, and it's got that vibe about it. It's real laid back, chill, and you're shouting people out. But then you go in, which is kind of a microcosm of the EP, like in a way, like I'm going in. But you can chill, kick back, and listen to this and crack a brew. And, you know, some of what I say may, get over, may go over your head, but you might catch it the second or third time around. Or you might be peeping me lyrically and you don't get how sweet the production is. You know? So yes. I, I listen to this project on different levels because when I listen to you, when I listen to you, first of all, I'm always listening for the lyrics. Because you're lyrical to me. And you've always got something to kind of say. And you may not get it the first time around. And I listen to what Felix is saying. Or what Black, Black Radical is saying. I mean, me use Bridges, I'll call you well, by the That's what I'm saying. We go back. We go back. <laughs> you know, go every back. version of me. So. <laughs> you even so, know the latest edition, so we don't even have to go there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but I've been listening to it lately and just peeping the production on it. Like, like um, you know, bro, because I started to drop, but that means a lot to me. You know, it's funny. I was talking this like today because, like, you know, everybody had a role in the job back in the day. So I wasn't, a, I wasn't a basic producer, and we had some killer producers, you know. But as you do, I always wanted to get my hands on on the production because you know, yeah, write a lyric, and you know the way you want it to go, and you know what I mean. So my vibe was always like, okay, if I could just produce one or two tunes on an album, I'd be happy. And I kind of still managed to do that. Like on the first album, I produced the New Poets and Somali. And then, you know, and I always tried to kind of keep that, even though like, you know, not trying to take the work away from anybody else. It was always BC on the production, TC, always like DJ Cell, do you know what I mean? Mo, DJ Mo was always in there. But so in this, with this project, I produced myself. Mm. And, you know, I did it not because I was trying to keep anybody else away. It was just the way the project came together because it was literally a retirement thing. So it's kind of funny because looking back on it, it would have probably made more sense to bring everybody in on it. But as I said, because I said I was going to be the last person in the game, the time I made this, everyone had a long retirement. <laughs> like, even if I'd asked them, man, they to come back. They'd have been like, what are you talking about, Willis? They was gone, man. They was in another phase of life. <laughs> it's such a concise project, and it lends itself to be an EP, because there's no weak links, right? You start off with, like, the black pop that's going hard, right? You're going hard, you're speaking on the industry, the music industry, like how you feel about it, how the um let's the jigaboo omics. I don't I, I don't I don't even know if that's a word, I'm making it up. Love that term. Jigaboo. It's a word now, bruv. <laughs> I love that term, man. What jigaboo omics, you know, and then you and then you go into this the second track on that. Beat. It's like that synth. As I said, it reminds me of the Love Bug Starsky Amateurville track on that synth, hard kind of 80s, 808 beat. Yeah. And you're just talking about how certain people act. And you're saying it isn't a race thing. It's not if you're white, it's not if you're black, it's just the way that you act, bruv. Like you just got things on your mind, but it's almost like you're spoon feeding it through the production. That's why it's interesting that you. Pro produced it because it's my production wise, it's my favorite Black Radical project. Oh, wow. that's yeah. blown away, fam. <laughs> and it's just like chill, laid back. I don't even smoke, but I wanted to kind of spark, spark <laughs> one up to it and meditate on it because you kind of ease yourself into it, right? Because you're just bigging up man's and just saying, like, yo, I'm just in my zone, I'm just chilling, I'm good. And then you go in. On that black radical, I'm so happy with that, fam. And and real man, that victory, like I said, it what that was what it was. And interesting enough, I got to say that that was a big part of it as well. Like when we talk about where I was in the mind frame as well, this is like super important for me. That believe it or not, I have to keep on saying this because it blows my mind. 
a lot of people think that I took that name and that mantle and I was on this black radical thing for some kind of a promote some kind of promotion. Because you know, we had Public Enemy and we had Paris and we had, you know, um X Clan and you know what I mean? Around that time it was a thing, right? So a lot of people thought that that was just my like, you know, yeah, this is my angle. Yeah. But you know. <laughs> Not even me. Let's rephrase that. The man's them who was on progression for our peoples was on progression for our peoples. There was nothing else going on. It wasn't like, yeah, I do that Monday to Friday, but we, I'm, I'm cool at the weekend. <laughs> I'm out here partying at the weekend. You get me? Like, man was on that 24-7, linking up, you know what I mean? Your family, like I said, we go back all like, you know what I mean? I talk about my... It's so, it's so funny having this conversation where I had to block a call. The call was coming from Peter Isaacs. Right when we start Isaacs. this. How, how is Peter Isaacs? I, I digress. Oh, yes, man, I just blanked him because we're doing this interview. <laughs> I, I used to sell fur, fur coats for, for Peter Isaacs. Me and Peter made some, some good money. <laughs> So when I'm talking about like lifelong commitment, which I didn't make, I hasten to add. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Your family, Peter Isaacs, my mentors, that it wasn't like a, a week thing and we take the weekend off. And what was happening to me in all honesty was the philosophy that was the truth when I was black radical was changing. Yeah. And that track, the victory was part of that. It was going from, you know, I was spending like, I started my time with the NOI. Being taught by, you know what I mean? Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Wafi Di Farrar and, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. We was looking for big head scientists and shit. And uh, when we was on that, <laughs> you know, dealing with looking at caucus or matters and we was on that. And my philosophy, like happened, what happened to Malcolm, was shifting from that very, very strict view of the world, you know what I mean? To something more open and more inclusive. So that track, actually, as you mentioned, that was really important for me because that was another reason why it was time to retire. Because even though I didn't invent that character as like a fraudulent thing just to get a promo, as what it was represented, I never, I didn't represent that anymore. I could see I was moving as a human being, as you do, as you should. Yeah. So that's the other reason why it was time to retire because I was like, well, okay, I don't want to be up here saying stuff that I don't believe just yeah. because it's in character. I was yeah. never a fraud when I started it. So why am I going to be a fraud now that it's got a bit of momentum and I'm still doing it, but I don't really believe that again. That's long. So, you know. It cap it off, you cap it off perfectly with the end. When you just... I, and once again, I love those opening bars. I can't spit it verb, verbatim, but you're basically saying, you're, you're, you're going to miss me when I'm gone. Right? You know what's funny about rapping, bro, for that? And I've I don't been doing this for 12 years. Yeah, and I don't really, man, I don't really forget what I'm man. It's, <laughs> it's always like, you're going to learn to appreciate me when I'm gone. But like, remember Radical Doe, you never bought one fucking song. He's like, I don't know why I don't forget bars after 20, 30 years, man. <laughs> I don't forget. He was spitting those bars. That's, those, those are classic bars, bro. Those should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I respect, man. But I, just, I find it funny that I, I, I can actually remember whole house verses and shit like 20, 30 years later. But no, for real, that, that was, like I said, that was, the, that was the side of the project where I was like, you know what? I came here, I did it. But really we should have got more respect for that. You know what I mean? Not just me, we should have got more respect for that. And I was really feeling that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love that track. I love, once again, it's just the perfect bookend. Like, it's just, four tracks is perfect to me. I, I, I love the fact that it's an EP. Like, it starts off with Black Pop, right? Literally, it's like, it's about Black Pop. Like, Black popular music, setting out commercialism, but it's also, in terms of um, the the audio, the way it sounds, it's the most commercial sounding track on the project. So you're kind of eased into it. It's like, as I said, you're kind of spoon fed. It's like black pop, black pop, black pop, black pop. Obviously, I, I, I let's assume that it's influenced by Keras One, right? Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, it's got a Keras One influence. So you kind of boom, boom, boom. At, at the time. I was always like this to Chris. <laughs> you know what I mean? KRS. KRS. But um, yeah, you got the, the black pop, and when you go through through the chambers to, to quote a Wu Tang phrase, the two other chambers, when you cap it off with the end, you know, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. I've been doing this, 
You haven't been supporting me. In fact, you never bought one fucking album. <laughs> <laughs> but people are gonna buy this project because it's 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 a classic project. It's a story that needs to be told, and um, it's just this is beautiful to be doing this with you, man. Like you know, you're. I've said this before. You're a huge influence on me. And um, I knew we were going to link up on on something. And there's another project we've been talking about linking up on, and that may be down the, the road. I don't want to speak on it too too much now. 100. But um, hundred. Yeah, we we about to make this happen. Now, fam, good finds is the only 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 label that this, this would ever happen with. This is like you know, it's a family thing, bro. Because as you know, you know when this was done, I never sold it. This was my thank you. That's what I love about it. That's what I feel. Yeah, so, yeah, the internet was just about popping off. And I remember that Chuck D had the rap station. So back then, I was just getting into that side of IT. So mm. I built a website and I just, bam, put it up there. Like, this is my thank you for the people there. You know what I mean? Put it up to the YouTube, da 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 da. da. Obviously, that's just disappeared. I could barely find a copy of it myself. But I wanted to say thank you because I now talked a lot about the support that we didn't get. But I was very, very aware and grateful for the support that we did get. <laughs> I'm dealing you know, with and so no, no one, no one to give the like pat on like, the back. It's really, it's really the the pat on my back to my wife because she des- designed the um, cover. But I love the fact that the the cover is influenced by Jackie McLean, one of my favorite jazz artists. He has an album called It's Time. Wow. It says it's, it's it's time over and over again. It's just a little photo of him and it's time over and over again. And we both looked at that cover and we said, that's the last will and testament because it's time. And it's, that record. it's a pretty famous record amongst jazz heads. They'll look at the cover and be like, wow, it's time. That's what they reference. And that's how I feel about that project. It's time. When you put it out, people weren't ready for it. But people are ready for it now, especially in, in this day and age. Well, brother, you know, I'm I'm glad you said that because you know I mean? we had kind of reason this year, a little before that, it's it's bit of sweet, it's bit of sweet for me, you get me? Like I ain't trying to make a, you know what I mean, um a, a profit or bring up off the current situation. And as you said, we've been talking about a project for like over a year now. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to work something together, but you know, I'm saddened with the Black Lives Matter movement and the assassination of George Floyd to see how much the stuff that I was talking about like 30 years ago, 20 odd years ago, is still relevant. Big time. You know, it's like, um, uh, it, it's like, it's that, that, and that's really what it was when I was saying like, you know, you're gonna learn to appreciate when they're going, you didn't buy one fucking song, feel no way. I didn't do it for the glamour but still my people from calamity stuff, you know what I mean? Save humanity, you know what I mean? I was trying to make the steps and put down the foundations so the our young people wouldn't have to be out in the streets protesting the same shit. I mean, that's I was saying them line. Like I wasn't here to get glimmity and glamity. I t- took from you know demon boys, enough respect to Mike J. Do you know what I mean? Like our friend, as many references there as I can. I mean, they had a song out there called the Glimmity Glamity, like you know, trying to go on like pop. So I'm like, no, I never did it for the glammy to steer my people away from insanity stuff. You know what I mean? I'm um, safe humanity because that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to make sure that we didn't have to see the shit that we've been seeing for the last two, three months nonstop with people still fighting out in the streets, protesting for human rights in 2020. It's like, for real, man, what, what, what is that? So, you know, if, if there's any, and that's why I said that, you know, everything is already recorded borrow it if you can't afford it because whatever I was doing in that day at time I understood that if it's still needed it was recorded right. and I wanted it to be as a record so other people could go back and research it and take from it and take what they needed from it if it was needed I was hoping it wouldn't be it appears to be that on some levels maybe it still will be so thank you for making it once again available because you know me I only know where it was <laughs> When you asked me about finding, wow, I feel very. I was like, fam, and I got, I got a box of that. I got a box of that tapes. <laughs> Sorry, my story. It's organic. It's it. It's organic and it's beautiful and it and it needs to be done. There's no. It just needs to be done and it has to be put out. It's a beautiful project. It's a beautiful record. 
And I said the main thing, it is organic. In this business, in this music industry, it's meant to be an organic process, putting out music. But as you know, so often it just isn't because of the business of it or the, the industry and the dealing with this person and that person. So um, this has just come about the way it's supposed to be. Two old friends bigging up each other. And beyond that, um, it's it's bigger than us. It's a manifesto that needs to be out there and it needs to be carved in stone. It's going to be carved in stone for the rest of time now. This conversation is going to be carved in stone for like the rest of time. A lot of, a lot of things that people do, and especially you as a recording artist, as a true artist, you don't really know when you're going to get your just use. You know? Oh. Your words are carved into history for the rest of time. You know what I mean? And we're only here for the for a blink of an eye. So what we've got to do, or what my my whole thing is regarding the music business, is taking these these musical gems, you know, um, and just putting them out there for the world. To, to take in and be encouraged by and inspired by. You know, right. people like you and other artists, there's so many great artists who, just through the politics of this bullshit industry, maybe never get got their just dues. But, you know, um, you know, a broken clock is, is when, they, when I say a broken clock, Tells the right time twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love that. <laughs> you know I mean? talk, bro. And I gotta say, you said something which is a hundred percent on the real because when I came into the business to come into the game, there was a big emphasis on performing. And one of the things I never forget is people was always be like, Was you at that show? You was at that show. And there were certain acts who were really focused on performing. And right from the start, my pro my focus was, was on recording for exactly what you just said. <laughs> exactly what you just said was why my focus was on recording. Why we set up the label, why we made way out of here, B-Boys, be wise. It was like, no, we're going to put make this a record because, you know, a record, forget as in a musical record, but a record is something that is there to stand the testament of time. So they know that we was here. They know that this is how we was living and they know that this is what we was trying to do. They know this is what we stood for. These were our values. These were our beliefs. This is what we're trying to, you know, how we're trying to improve the world. Yeah. So come what may, you know, we, we, we've got that exactly how you said it, bruv. So that's what I'm trying to say. That is so special for me, for this record moment in time to not only be being put back out there at a time when it's needed, but actually be put back on record as vinyl. <laughs> That's like three you know, strikes. We'll be shipping you that vinyl. We'll be shipping you the vinyl. It's on its way. It's on its way. So, um, yeah, need to wrap it up. Keep it moving. Do what we got to do. But um, yeah, it's always a pleasure talking to you, bro. Every time. You know what I mean, and um, you know, we'll have some, some more questions <laughs> off the record. But but yeah, I'm I'm super excited to be putting this this project out. And thank you so much for entrusting it to us because um this is a big deal man no respect bro but you know you know for real there's nowhere else you go to even you're talking about the vibe on the end man you forget that it was me you robbie daktari big apple danish is listening to 60s music breaking down you know what i mean like yeah. you're part of this always have been I'm trying to say it's like you know we were sitting down there going through '60s breaks, reasoning you know that the lifestyles of those people, you know what I mean? There's nowhere else this this could be, and and I couldn't be happier, my brother. Seriously, respect, bro. I'm gonna sign off on this recording. Hopefully, I get it rid. I got here. Boom! Stop recording. Here we go. Hey, up. Good fine records. Last will and testament. It's coming soon. It's around the corner. We're gonna make this happen. Limited run. Yeah. Two two fifty <laughs> copies, so act like you know. There may not be a second pressing, so you need to jump on it, bro. And oh, this man. is salesman talk. This is like Black Radical Mark Two, the originator for UK hip hop. I I said it. He never said it. He don't know backlash. I said. <laughs> <that>. <laughs>
All right. Peace.